Well, it was a busy weekend in Valencia, and if you're watching online, and I hope you're enjoying your lunch if you're in Europe, but I know we've got many people that are enjoying us over breakfast over in the United States, and I think Joe Balash, who is the International Competitions Liaison uh, Officer for NASCAR Events Management, is one of those that is keen to see what goes on here at Autodromo di Francia Corta. Let's just have a look. You can see that the cars are already on the grid as we build up to this uh, Elite 1 race here. We see Elite 2 happen later on, and let's just guide you through the grid now, because we had qualifying and we had the super pole shootout earlier on and when we got to super pole it was popping the car on pole position the number 54 uh, cal racing chevrolet ss the yellow car on the left hand side of the screen or on the right hand side of the screen as we look at it from behind yep, qualified on pole position and that was the eighth pole position for alan day that matches the record of anda villarino alongside him on that front row of the grid is the black car with the uh, French Tricolore stripe down the centre of it, which is Loris Heisman's, uh, and that is the uh, uh, Hendrix Motorsport Ford Mustang. The second row of the grid is where we see the number 91 Brax Racing Chevrolet of Mark Goosens. That is the blue car with the Dayglow yellow flashes to it. He took a win at Zolder last year, did Mark Goosens. And alongside him is the RDV Competition Toyota Camry, the first Toyota on the grid. Number three, twice a runner-up in this championship. That's the black and white car on the left-hand side of your screen is Fred Gabion. The third row of the grid, that's the PK Car Sport Chevrolet SS, number 24, which is Anthony Kumpen, the black car that you can just see, the very subtle yellow day glow flashes to it. Anthony Kumpen, twice a champion, runner-up last year was he, and he'll be hoping for good things this weekend. He finished in third and in second spot, podium places in both of the races at Valencia. Alongside him, it's another former champion, the light blue car, the Michi Motors uh, Mavi-supported car, and that is uh, Luca Lazar, the 2009-2010 champion who finished in the top ten in both of the races that we had at Circuit Ricardo Tormo. Row number four of the grid, that's the leading challenger uh, from qualifying which is the number 73 car of Wilfred Bruseni. He had mixed fortunes at Valencia in Elite 1 but he did go very well in Elite 2 did Wilfred Bruseni and alongside him it's car number 9 which is Gianmarco Urkeli. He is the 2015 Elite 2 champion and another driver that finished inside the top 10 in both of the races. So he's at the wheel of the Racers Motorsport car. You can see that clearly identified on the back of his car. Onto the next row of the grid. That's where we see car number 32, which is the GoFast racing car of Roman Inietta. GoFast, a very busy team on both sides of the Atlantic, preparing cars for both this European NASCAR championship and for the main domestic championship. And alongside, that is the next of the cars that you see, which is Francisco Cidi. His is the black and orange car, Francisco. Poor weekend in Valencia, only 27th in one race and 28th in the other, but 10th in qualifying. And for the local team, they'll be hoping for great things this weekend. The next row of the grid, these are the final two cars that got through to Super Bowl. The Knauf supported Ford Mustang, number 37 of the reigning Elite Two champion which is Toma Ferrando, who finished seventh in the first race at Valencia and was second in the second of the two races. And alongside him is where we see the Club Motorsports Ford Mustang, uh, from car number 41, Fabrizio Amata. That's the green bumper to the tail end of the car, but you can also see the black and the orange flashes to it. The next row of the grid, these are cars that now just missed out on the shootout. Number 11 is the largely black car of Stenis Longin. He's the 2016 Elite 2 champion. Had a couple of fourth places at Valencia, and alongside him is the number 66 Dexwex supported car. See the green tail end to that car in the hands of the former Le Mans winner who had an awful weekend at Valencia. He was outside the top 25 in both races, Christophe Bouchou. Row 8 of the grid, car number 7, Martin Dubeck, the new team for this weekend, the Belgian Driver Academy team. Martin finished 20th in the first race and only 11th in the second. He'll be hoping for better things. And alongside is number 77, and that is the car of Alexander Graf. The ninth row of the grid, car number one, great to see him back. Alex Cafe, a local hero, ex-Formula One driver, of course, the black number one car. He grew up just five kilometres away from this circuit, so very much on home soil from where he grew up as a child. And alongside him is where we see car number 56, which is uh, uh, Alex Gombi. The tenth row of the grid is number 46, Justin Kuntz. And alongside is car number two, the Alex Cafe Motorsport prepared Toyota Camry of Kenko Mura. The 11th row of the grid, it's car number 29, which is Julian Schell. He's a little bit out of position. He finished 13th in the first race and 19th at the wheel of his Pegasus Chevrolet in Valencia. And alongside him is the number 18 Yako supported car in the hands of the 1999 Bush champion and the 2000 Monster Energy champion, Bobby Labonte. And let's not forget that, of course, as the engines are turned on, the drivers are asked to start their engines. Let's not forget that Bobby Labonte is also 
you can still vote for the NASCAR Hall of Fame. Voting closes just on the 21st of May, and Bobby is one of those that has been nominated for the NASCAR Hall of Fame. So we wish him all of the very best with that. As and when the votes are in, the votes are announced, and well, the information is given out. Now, the first thing we've got to do is wish him well in this race, though, Bobby. It's great to have him here. The 12th row of the grid is number 47, which is the Brazilian driver for uh, MRT Nocentini, which is Marconi Abreu. He was the challenger winner last year in the championship, and alongside him is the challenger winner from the year before, the number eight car of Dario Carzo, the red car towards the tail end of the grid there. You can just see it at the bottom of your picture. And the final few rows of the grid is where on row number 13 we see number 27, which is Angelo Rigari at the wheel of his BVR Motorsport Ford Mustang. Alongside him is number 78, which is Jerry Devert for Brax Racing. And then the final couple of rows of the grid. Number 31, Mario Treone, a driver who used to race and was very successful in the Italian Super Touring Car Championship. Uh, he's at the wheel of his race art Ford Mustang, light blue car with a very easy to spot orange flash down the centre. Off they go on their warming up lap is alongside Matthias Hauer, the number 44 car from Cal Racing. And at the back of the grid, car number 10, which is Miguel Angel Derez Perez, uh, Dase Perez, at the wheel of the uh, Racing Total Chevrolet SS. So off they go on their green flag warming up lap. It's a 25 lap race. 32 cars in the event over the course of this weekend. That is a record in itself for the NASCAR Wheel in Euro Series. So off they go on their warming up lap. 25 lap race, which around the 2.504 kilometer Autodroma di Francia Corta, Daniel Bernara circuit is about 62, almost 63 kilometers they'll be racing for. We won't finish under a safety car period either. We've got green, white checkered, which will be deployed if needs be until we clear any incidents and then we will get a green, white checkered and well the cars now just starting to head off around this 11 turn circuit the first three turns are all right handers so turn one turn two turn three all right handers the first left hander is turn four and whilst we raced here last year for the first time at Autodromo di Francia Corta. Turn five and six has changed. We've lost sort of one of the turns. It used to be a 12 turn circuit. It's now gone down to an 11 turn circuit because the changes at turn five and turn six mean that one of the chicanes has gone. So turn five is now a very fast left hander, which the drivers have been absolutely loving here this weekend. And then you're still sort of turning and rotating the car before you're on the brakes, using all of the curves to get into turn number six. Turn number seven is difficult on the exit where you apply the power and try and straighten up the car. And then it's a kink through eight, a kink through nine. They're just coming out of turn 10 now. And this is where the cars have been instructed by the race officials and the race director on the exit of turn number 10. That's where they need to get themselves into two by two order. And the information is they need to be door to door with the car alongside them, bumper to bumper with the car ahead and the car behind. And as they turn through the hairpin at 11, where we're surely to see some action over the course of the weekend, it's round through turn 12. And then we can get the race underway so neat two by two order they are all in they head round through turn 11 the circuit drops away on the exit up towards turn number 12 the yellow cal racing car of alan day sitting there on pole position a double win for him at valencia he's got loris heisemans alongside they head up towards the red lights which are extinguished now and we're away and racing for the first time in elite one this weekend as the lights go out and we get the race underway. It's a great start from Alan Day. And as they head up towards turn number one, he's already got himself ahead of Loris Heismans. He's looking to try and squeeze his way up the inside. Comes Mark Goosens. Mark Goosens is through into second place. Loris Heismans is braving it out around the outside at turn number one. But they're all right-handers. He needs to try and get back towards the apex of the corner. Otherwise, he's going to drop like a stone. There's been a spin further down through the order. And that is Justin Kuntz, who was hoping for good fortunes after a terrible weekend at Valencia. But he's already had a spin and has dropped down through the order as Alan Day is romping away already building daylight between himself and Mark Goosens in second place third place is the black number 50 car in the hands of Loris Heismans well they're together the two of them got together at Valencia so we're hoping that probably the two of them just make sure that they give each other a little more racing room this weekend and Fred Gabion looks very very hungry he's never won in Italy as Fred Gabion the number three RDV competition Toyota Camry sits there in third place as they turn their way out of car out of turn number 10 for the first time and the cars sprint their way up towards turn number 11 but the front two just getting away a lock break from Alan Day as he crests the rise in towards the braking area at 11 but it's the Cal Racing machine that leads the Brax Chevy is there in second position and in third place it Thank is you, going to be Loris Heisemans in the Ford that sits there in third place the Toyota of Fred Gabion is in fourth place fifth place is Anthony Kumpen twice a double champion twice a champion in this series and Gianmarco Urkeli sitting there in sixth as things stand so that's the order of the top six as for Justin Kuntz well 
He's a driver that has tumbled down through the order following that spin, but he's not the only one as well. Alex Caffey has come through a long, long way down through the order at the end of lap number one, and so has the number 56 car of Alex Jompy as well. So through turn six, up towards seven again, you're ready. You can see the Cal Racing Chevrolet in the hands of the Israeli driver, Alan Day, the reigning champion, starting to pull away. And with the battles further down through the order, you see just how close it is further back, but Alan Day's getting away. Mark Goosens was going with him, but I don't think has made as much progress over the course of this lap. They're heading up towards turn number 10. It looks like it's a good battle beginning to form for fifth, sixth and seventh place, which is the number 24 car of Anthony Kumpen fighting away with the Mustang of Giamarca Urkeli and Luca Lassar, who we did an onboard lap with earlier on over the course of this weekend, is not that far away as he lock brakes the car squirreling around under braking. Here's the squabbles further down through the order. The yellow flags up at turn number 11, so there's no overtaking allowed up through 11 and 12 currently, but you can see the advantage that Alan Day is building up now, looking to try and make it a clean sweep, sweep of victories. As for issues on lap number one, I said Alex Caffey and Justin Kuntz have dropped through the order. Well, Alex Jompy at the wheel of the number 56 car, he has brought that Cal Racing Chevrolet into the pit lane. And big, big problems. You can see bodywork damage to Marconi Abreu as well. The Brazilian driver at the wheel of his uh, MRT No Cintini Ford Mustang has got a fair amount of damage to the front of that. Surely he's going to have to call into the pit lane. The front wing is missing. The bumper is sort of, I think, hanging on on the basis that the car is still moving forwards. As soon as he stops, I think the bumper will fall off. So he's surely going to have to come into the pit lane. There goes number 18. That's Bobby Labonte. Bobby is, at the moment, down in 21st position. He's behind the Swiss driver, uh, Mauro Trione, and has got very much for company right behind him. Dario Carzo at the wheel of the number 8 car for Bobby. A quick chat to him. He was a little bit disappointed with the way qualifying went, but he said, well, in typical fashion, he starts slowly and get, just gets quicker and quicker and quicker as the weekend goes on. And for the moment, he's certainly applying some pressure to Mario Torreoni, but he's got to watch his bumper. He's got Dario Carzo all over the tail end of him. Can Carzo squeeze his way through? Not at the moment. The American still just leads. Dario Carzo is having a look at the inside as they head in towards turn number 11. Bobby Labonte gives him room, and it looks like they're going to go side by side through 11, but labonte has got the inside line as they head through the left-hander at number 12 over the start finish line and has Dario Carzo been able to steal the place away well they're still side by side when they came over the start finish line but by the time they get towards turn one the order has shuffled and Carzo has gone through and I think also now squeezing his way through with a great move up the inside very late on the brakes that was Angelo Regaro who was able to squeeze his way through so Labonte's now down into 23rd position so he was hoping to gain places He's lost them at the moment. Mark Goosens, you can see, he's been reeled in over the course of these last few laps. He was a little bit further up the road from Loris Heisemans, but for the moment, it looks as though the Belgian driver just has the upper hand over the Dutchman as they work their way through turn number 10 and on towards turn number 11. Up the short straight, you can see just the slight rise, just as you get to the braking point. The front end of Alan Day's car dips. The unloaded wheel just locks up a little bit. But Mark Goosens in second place is very much under pressure. We saw just one win for Mark Goosens. That came at the final race of the season at Zolder. The Belgian driver for Brax, the Belgian team, at a Belgian circuit, claiming a victory, his first victory of the season, as Alan Day leads now by two and a half seconds exactly from Mark Goosens in second place. Loris Heismans is there in third place. Fred Gabion is in fourth place and has not given up as yet, has Fred Gabion. He had a solid weekend at what was Valencia and finished second in the first race he was third in the second twice a runner-up but has never been a champion in the NASCAR wheel in Euro Series would dearly like to try and put that wrong uh, uh, if he can and switch it round over the course of the 2018 season Anthony Cooper now is also beginning to close in the number 24 car for PK Car Sport is closing in onto that car there both Mark Goosens and Loris Heismans need results this weekend, both of them having had mixed fortunes at Valencia. You can drop your worst race of the season. Well, they've already had a bad race this season. They really can't afford another one as they sit there in second and third places respectively. A good fight going on also for further down through the order. Luca Lasare looking to try and put Gianmarco Urkeli under pressure to try and squeeze his way through. But Urkeli, the former Elite 2 champion, has managed to keep the double Elite 1 champion behind. 
Technical black flag going out for Marconi Abreu. Well, there's no real guessing as to what that's for. That will be the front bumper that's missing off it. We've had a couple of cars go very wide at turn number 12 there, so these yellow flags up at 12. There is Giamarco Urkeli still sticking his elbows out, hanging on to sixth position. Luca Lassari would, uh, Luca Lassari would like to dearly find his way through, and the problem at turn number 12 is because off the circuit has gone Alexander Graf, so that is going to bring out the safety car, I'm afraid. So safety car will head out onto circuit. Alexander Graf's car, the Memphis racing car, sitting firmly in the gravel trap at turn number 12. You can see a little bit of smoke just coming from the exhaust pipes, which sit just in front of those rear wheels on it, as he is trying to keep the engine running and seeing whether once he's given a push out of the gravel, where he can keep going. Now, the difficult thing for Alan Day is that he'd built up a three-second advantage now. That's going to get the field all back together again, and he's going to bunch everybody up as out comes the safety car onto circuit. We were on lap number seven at the time that the safety car came out. Six laps completed. There's a bit of debris in the circuit that needs clearing up. We've got the errant car of Alexander Graf in the gravel trap, the Swedish driver. Multiple Swedish V8 champion is Alexander Graf as he clambers out of the number 77 car and runs to the relative safety of the barriers. So the Swede hops over the barriers out of harm's way and whatever the incident was between himself and another car we gather he didn't do it on his own there was somebody else potentially involved the officials are just wanting i gather with the information we're receiving to have a look at that and they will check the video evidence the car's all running judicial in-car cameras we've got the circuit cameras around the circuit as well we've got our cameras providing the television pictures all of that will be viewed by the officials and if needs be then they will of course make decisions to sort things out if they think that something has not quite happened so we'll get that car out of the way we will then need to reorder the field and only once we've then reordered the field then we might see a, a free pass for Alex Jompy because there is the, the free pass for the first of the cars that's a lap down gets the free pass as you would see in NASCAR racing on the other side of the Atlantic of course this being the only NASCAR affiliated championship this side of the Atlantic and after here in Francia Quarter, we head to Brands Hatch in the UK on the Indy circuit there. That weekend takes place for American Speed Fest 6 on the 9th and 10th of June. Then we have the Oval World Challenge coming up. We're back to Tour Speedway in France this year, 30th of June and 1st of July for the 7th and 8th races of the season, round 4 of the championship. And then once we've completed our World Oval Challenge at Tour, in France and then we head to the semi-finals which this year take place at Hockenheim in Germany 15th and 16th of September and the finals once more the American Festival NASCAR finals take place at Zolder on the 20th and 21st of October and of course the semi-finals and the finals double points available for the normal races it's 40 points for a race win 35 if you're second and it descends by one point from there the driver that claims the most places from their grid slot to their finishing position also can claim an extra four points in the championship in each race uh, as for our class leaders at this stage just while we are reordering and completing the free pass for Alex Jompy Loris Heisemans leads the junior trophy at this stage so Lawrence Heisemans is our junior trophy leader and Fabrizio Armata leads the challenger trophy well for Loris Heisemans he's in third position overall and leading the junior trophy for Fabrizio Armata the Italian is down in 13th position at the wheel of his Ford Mustang so reordering now taking place Alan Day having had all that advantage whittled away to nothing we're now on lap number nine in reality of a 25 lap race let's not forget and as they turn their way through turn number three and up towards turn number four this is where you can see you should be able to see the tarmac will change color it's a, a gray tarmac is the old tarmac and then as it changes slightly blacker that's the new bit that they've put in first time it's been used really this weekend and the pace car is just coming up towards it now so this is now turn number five there's the change in the tarmac and that's a very fast left-hand kink that brings them in towards this bit turn number six which they approach much quicker than they have done and then you see the change of tarmac any second now there that's where they go back to the original part of the circuit so it was a 13 turn circuit it's now a 12 turn circuit and all of the drivers that new little section it's not really taken away much it's slightly shortened the lap but rather than head out of turn four down a straight and then into a chicane it's a very fast kink now that they head to and the drivers have been 
absolutely loving that section of the circuit. They say, you know, it's quite difficult, it's quite technical, because you approach it a little bit quicker, you're not on the brakes at mu much, and as a result of that slight shortening of the circuit and the faster kink, the cars around the track are about a second quicker than they were last year as well. And it's a very similar compound of tyre. It's BF Goodrich providing the tyres this season. We've got some great sporters and sponsors of this championship as well. The likes of Whelan Engineering, of Moog, of Canal, who, of course, are supporting some of the cars out there. Dexwet, it's great to see Dexwet getting involved with teams as well, of course, this year. The likes of Christoph Bouchou's car, the Dexwet car, and with it being Silver Line and Marler and k &N Filters and Ken Oil as well. You know, without all of their support, we simply couldn't have the show that we've got and what is the pure racing of the NASCAR wheel and Euro series fastest lap from today's race will dictate the grid for tomorrow's race now last year this equivalent race meeting Alan Day ticked every box bar one he set the fastest lap in race number one which gave him the pole position for race number two he also won race number one and he won race number two the only thing he didn't do was start on pole position at the very beginning of the weekend. That honour went the way of Fred Gabion last year, but the Frenchman couldn't bring it home for the win. So he'll be hoping that he can at least haul himself up the order and onto the podium because for the moment he's sitting down there in, third, in fourth position, car number three, the Toyota Camry. So it's Chevrolet 1-2, Alan Day and Mark Goosens. It's a Ford Mustang and a Toyota Camry 3 and 4, Loris Heisemans and Freddy Gabion. It's a Chevy and a Ford for fifth and sixth, Anthony Kumpen and Gianmarco Urkeli. Alex Jompi has now had the free pass, so he is on his way back round. That's the car that called into the pit lane, so the number 56 car of Alex Jompi, the car that came in at the end of lap number one, the Italian driver for an Italian team in Italy. Cal will be very pleased if they can have some good results this weekend. And he has had the free pass, so he is now no longer two laps down, he's just gone one lap down because the time spent in the pits didn't just cost him moving off the lead lap, it's cost him another one. And we can see now Alex Jombi, you can just see him accelerating his way through it's the yellow car, but you still see the damage to the front corner of it and he's now just about to go past the safety car and get the free pass to get himself back onto the lead, or back onto the one lap off the lead of the race. Now the restart of this is going to be critical it is a two by two restart very similar format to we saw earlier on alan day leads the race mark goosens as you see is in second place loris heisman's in third fred gabion is there in fourth place anthony kumpen fifth ahead of Gianmarco urkeli in sixth place double former champion luca lazar sitting there in seventh place Thomas ferrando the reigning elite two champion moving up exclusively to elite one this year he did both over the 2017 season concentrating on elite one this year is there in eighth place dennis longine another former elite two champion that now concentrates his efforts purely on elite one is there in ninth and it was francisco sini who is there in 10th place and alex jompi has now had the free pass he's gone past the safety car and he's going to make his way all the way back round to line up back at the back of the train of cars that still sit behind the safety car and we should hopefully be good to go green possibly the end of this lap that we're about to start so no confirmation of that but i think now that alex jompi has had the free pass he should quite easily be able to catch up all the way round with the train of cars which are all rather patiently waiting behind the safety car you can see the weaving from side to side it's a beautiful warm day here in northern italy it's mid 20s there's very little breeze around this circuit well locally there's not a lot of breeze but the circuit sits in a well it's not a natural bowl it's a man-made bowl because it's a former quarry that we sit in here at francia quarter we will be going green at the end of this lap and it's a, a beautiful circuit actually a lovely area of Italy and it was really built from the, the local enthusiasm of, of a local building contractor who decided to convert this former quarry into what is now an international racing circuit. Ettore Bonara's vision started to take shape just after the millennium when he began work on constructing the first phase of the development. In 2006 the initial circuit was extended up to 2.4 kilometers and that too was only ever intended as a, as a stepping stone towards the full length circuit which was subsequently created at the end of 2007 as well major events have been here we've seen the likes of the, the Yamaha R125 Cup we've seen the KTM Duke Trophy we've seen FIA European touring cars here in the past as well and it really is a, 
a wonderful circuit in the northern part of Italy and one that is now well, for the second year on the trot part of the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series championship calendar. It was the semi-final venue for last year. It's slightly earlier in the championship this year, but there's still lots of racing to be done. So this is the Elite One race under safety car. We're now on lap number 11 of the scheduled 25 and the safety car will be in at the end of this lap. So as it turns out of turn 10 now, now we will see the drivers get the instruction to get themselves back into two by two order. And that two by two order is critical for the restarts because of course the first three corners are right hand corners. So for the likes of Mark Goosens, who is on the right of your screen, he's gonna have to turn his way around the outside at turn one, turn two and turn three, or at some point move from that side of the circuit, the left-hand side as it would be, to the right-hand side to protect that inside line. But by then, everybody else might have been able to sneak their way through. So if you're on the odd numbers, any restarts really help you well if you're first, third, fifth, seventh, ninth in the queue, and so it goes on and on and on with the first three corners really hampering those that are on the left-hand side of the circuit as they charge up towards turn number one. So we're in neat two-by-two two order. Alex Jompy has had the free pass. We'll wait for the cars to head back over the start-finish line. Alan Day in the yellow car. Mark Goosens in the blue car for Brax Racing with the Dayglow stripes on it. And we're about to get things back underway here at Autodromo Francia Corta. The green flag waves and we go back to racing instantly some of them jinking out and uh, straight away Mark Goosens has got himself right alongside uh, Alan Day and he's going to protect that inside line as they head up towards to what it all gets rather tight Fred Gavion is clicked by Gianmarco Urkeli who just about avoids too much contact so as to prevent damage on both cars but that was rather close we thought it would be close at the restart but thankfully Everybody has been rather well behaved there and they've all got away with it. A few of them just running wide, but that's more to avoid contact on a very close restart. Great restart from number 54, Alan Day, already twice a race winner so far this season. Mark Goosens with just one NASCAR Wheel Euro Series win under his belt, sitting there in second position. Loris Heisman's sitting there in third position and fourth place at this stage. It's Fred Gabion that is there in fourth place. It looks as though there's a penalty going to be issued to car number 32. Now that is Roman Inietta for a collision. Now that may, don't know, may be something to do with the, the reason why we had the safety car in the first place. We just don't know, but a penalty has been awarded. It's a drive-through penalty for car number 32. Alan Day still continuing to lead. Mark Goosen's in second place. Loris Hausman's always pushing him round through turn number 11 there. There was a little bit of contact between the pair of them. They both got away with it still as they charged away over the start finish line. But what a restart from Alan Day already opening up the daylight between himself and Mark Goosen's, who is back where he was really. And as they head up towards turn number one, Loris Heisman's will be thinking, well, Robin's racing, Mark. You know, I'm here. I want to get my way through. I am desperate to try and improve upon what was a mixed weekend of fortune really for Loris Heisman's uh, at Valencia. Well, uh, well, an awful weekend, I suppose, really. 30th in one race. He was 24th in the other. He had the pace all weekend, but just didn't happen. The two of them have already come together once so far this season. Uh, Freddy Gabion is busy defending at the wheel of the number three uh, RDV competition car, trying to keep the Toyota Camry ahead of Gianmarco Urkeli. Well, the uh, orange and black number nine car in the hands of the Italian, still sitting behind at the moment. We're on lap number 13 of 25 at this stage 12 laps completed so we're now at half race distance and we've just had the one safety car period we're side by side further down through the order and that looks as though Luca Lassar has gained a place there on Toma Ferrando further down through the order and trying to squeeze his way through also now is that Stenis Longin coming up the inside it looks as though it is the number 11 car looking to try and squeeze his way through but Thomas Ferrando was having none of that, very brave, all the way around the outside almost at 11 to hang on to the place. He just lost the one place there to the Mavi supported car of Michi Motors number 33, Luca Lassar. And here is Thomas Ferrando. You can see the queue of cars lining up behind him. The first of which is number 11, Stenis Longi. The next of which is Francesco Sini. And then right behind him is going to be Martin Dubeck, isn't it? The Czech driver at the wheel of number seven. That's a huge train of cars, and Tom Ferrando has got his hands very full indeed. The reigning Elite Two champion, who finished in the top ten in both races in Valencia, seventh in the first race, second in the second race was Tom Ferrando. And as they turn their way through turn number eight and nine, see as to 
whether Thomas Brando is going to be able to hang on to a further place. Sorry, 12th in the second race. Not second, 12th in the second race. And he's having to stick his elbows out here to hang on to the place. Alan Day, though, is starting to break away in the lead of the race. Mark Goosen still there, the number 91 Brax Racing Chevy in second place. Loris Heisman's in the Ford Mustang sitting there in third. Toyota Camry in fourth place with the three marks or manufacturers in the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series. We've got all three represented inside the top four. It's Chevy 1-2, Mustang 3, the Toyota sitting there in fourth place. And Loris Heisman's is desperate to try and work his way through and past Mark Goosen's. Mark Goosen's hugely experienced racing both these NASCAR William Euro Series cars over the course of the last few seasons. He carved out quite a nice sports car racing career over in America as well. We've seen him on the podium in the Rolex 24 at Daytona. And for the moment, he is keeping Loris Heismans firmly behind him as they head out of turn number seven again and up towards turn number eight. Loris Heismans, who we've seen racing in Audi TTs and TCRs and Renault Clios in the past, but has so far had the pace in both rounds of the championship, but say Valencia didn't quite happen for him. The two of them did come together in one of the races, but it's been nice and clean so far. Just that little bit of contact between the two of them as up towards the breaking area for turn number 11 now go. Loris Heismans is desperate to try and work his way through, but all Mark Goosens is doing is making sure he doesn't miss any breaking points, doesn't miss any apexes and gets cleanly off the corners. And that makes it very difficult to pass. There goes Francisco Cini. He's got cars queuing up behind him, including the number seven car of Martin Dubeck, Christophe Bouchou, Wilfred Boussena, all in that queue of cars that are just heading over the start-finish line now. Another lap completed. Mark Goosen still leading the race. The Israeli driver, though, Alan Day, the reigning champion, just getting away. Leads by 2.2 seconds now from this pair, still fighting over second and third. And although they're fighting over second and third, they're not really falling into the clutches of the Frenchman, Fred Gabion. As for Alex Caffey, local driver who had a very poor first lap and dropped all the way down through the order. Well, he's carving his way back up. He was 26th last time I looked. Alex Caffey, if you'll spot now, is up to 16th position in the bottom left-hand corners of your screen at the wheel of car number one. So it really has been a fantastic recovery drive for Alex Caffey at the wheel of the self-run Ford Mustang. Of course, ex-Formula One driver, race for the likes of... Ocella and Scuderia Italia, as well as Arrows, of course. His best ever finishing Grand Prix was a fourth place. But he's working his way well and truly up through the order. You can see just how tight it is for some of the places. Tom Ferrando now is starting to pull a little bit of daylight between himself and the number 11 car of Stenis Longines as those two cars go through. And just heading out to turn number 10, that looks as though that is another little fight that's just heading up towards our cameras now. There's car number one. Well, there's Alex Caffey. You can understand why he came into the pits at the end of the first lap with damage to that one. Here comes another little battle, and that's Justin Kuntz looking to try and work his way back up through the order. Good place gained there from Justin Kuntz. So he is a driver that is going to come through in 18th position. As for Bobby Labonte, well, he fell a lap down now, and not entirely sure where that happened, but Bobby Labonte is now off the lead lap, unfortunately, and will just have to try and look for a, a fast lap in this race to give him a good grid position for tomorrow's race as well, the 2000 Monster Energy NASCAR champion. So, the lead advantage is just continually opening up, or had been. On that lap, Mark Goosen's just brought it down a little bit. It came down to one three-quarter seconds between himself and Alan Day in the lead of the race. This fight that we're looking at now is going to be for the final two places inside the top 20, which is going to be Dario Carzo fighting away with the rather battered looking number 47 car of Marconi Abreu. As over the start finish line comes our race leader. Another lap completed, 17 laps completed. Alan Day, that time through, just matched the pace of Mark Goosens. The gap between the pair of them actually came out by blink of an eye really 60 thousandths of a second was the difference in the lap time so that's Alan Day just making sure that he drives as quick as he needs to but no quicker because he doesn't want to take too much life out of those BF Goodrich tyres they are all limited to a, just four sets of or four tyres for the whole weekend so it's very much about in these warm conditions in particular not overworking the tyres not overworking the car so that you end up with a reasonable set of boots for later on in the race and there is that Francisco Cini that's had the problem I think it might be yellow flags there and that looks like the Solaris Motorsport car of Francisco Cini has had a problem and is that 
deemed to be in a safe enough place so as to be able to carry on the race or might we need another safety car for the moment we carry on there is traffic just up the road that needs dealing with and it is going to be the number 10 car that is going to be dealt with by our race leader which is Miguel Angel Derry Perez but it looks as though safety car is indeed coming out so we are going full course caution once more here with another lap about to be completed so that is now 18 laps completed Alan Day leading the race but for the second time we go full course caution I can see another car in the pit lane as well and that is Mauro Trione's car the number 31 car that is in the pit lane new car for them this weekend new paint scheme on that car compared to what we saw in Valencia but it looks as though for the number 31 car the race art Ford Mustang that no, is it very very sadly for Mauro Trione so ah, si. he's not going to be able to take the chequered flag in this one so safety car back out there for the second time looks as though that advantage that Alan Day has built up is going to be eroded well, Alan Day had just passed the lapped car for position and that will be free pass as well so Day has avoided his teammate getting the free pass which would have been yeah it would have been Alex Jompy would have had the free pass and that would have got him back on the lead lap but because Alan Day squeezed his way past that slower traffic we think just before the safety car came out then that is potentially going to stop Alex Jompy getting back on the lead lap which is Alan Day's Cal teammate so that may be wasn't quite communicated to him so I think it will probably be the racing total Chevrolet SS of Miguel Angel uh, Dasa Perez that will end up getting the free pass Okay. but we will find out as to whether that took place before the safety car instruction was given or not subject to exactly what happens over the next few laps behind the safety car when all of that information is given to the spotters the spotters in communication with the drivers as well they've got a very good lookout point here in the main control tower at Autodromo Francia Corto Daniel Bernara and the safety car has indeed now started to pick up that number 10 car of Dasa Perev so under safety car conditions once more the order hasn't really shuffled too much really it's still Alan Day leading at the wheel of his Chevrolet the Brax Racing Chevy of Mark Goosens in the second position third place is the Ford Mustang the number 50 car in the hands of Loris Heisman's the Hendrix Motorsport car there is the safety car with that lapped car of Miguel Angel Dasa Perez sitting behind it and there is number 54 our race leader Alan Day there is Francisco Cini well I thought it was Francisco Cini's car it just looks as though he's sort of come out of turn number seven and has had some sort of problem and the car looks as though it's just gone into the gravel trap potentially there so that will be sorted out very quickly in fact it's turn number eight isn't it yes who's come out of seven and the car's gone up to turn number eight and I think that'll probably be a mechanical issue for that car because it's an unusual place to have the car wash out and go wide confirmation is being received that the number 56 car of Alex Jompy will indeed get the free pass so that means that you know, the, the the job hadn't quite been done by Alan Day before the safety car instruction was given so that's a bit of a let off really isn't it so it does mean that Alan Day the race leader it will be his teammate Alex Jompy that gets the second free pass he's already had one which brought him from two laps down to one lap down he's now going to be at the wheel of the number 56 car back on the lead lap so here's confirmation then of the order Alan Day number 54 leads the race number 91 Mark Goosens is in second place with number 50 Loris Heismans in third Fred Gabion is in fourth place Gianmarco Urkeli is there in fifth place and Luca Lassar completes the top six Anthony Kumpen is seventh Thomas Ferrando is eighth Stennis Longin is there in ninth place and Martin Dubeck is in tenth position Christophe Bouchou is 11th Wilfred Boussena is eighth Fabrizio Amata Sorry, is uh, Christoph Bouchou is 11th. Wilfred Boussena is 12th. Fabrizio Amata is 13th, head of Julian Schell in 14th place. And Alex Caffey is up to 15th. He's gained another place since we last picked up on it. So he's making really good progress, just clawing his way back uh, onto the cars. And the safety car period's helping him as well, because it now means he's back on that little train of cars again. We will pick up on who is leading also the two separate categories we've got, which is the Junior Trophy and the Challenger Trophy as well Morris Heismans is going to be the leader of the junior trophy as he sits there in third position and the leader 
of the Challenger Trophy. Well, Wilfried Busena was the leading Challenger Trophy qualifier. Fabrizio Amata, though, was ahead of him in the race, but it looks as though they've swapped back round again. So I think it's Wilfred Busena, the leading challenger at this stage, and Fabrizio Amata, who was leading the Challenger Trophy, has dropped back down through the order. The Junior Trophy is for drivers under 25 years of age, and the Challenger Trophy in Elite One is for the amateur drivers. So that gives you an indication as to what they are. So. The number 56 car has now passed the safety car. So we will very shortly see Alex Jompy making his way back round. You can see him just shooting his way up towards turn number 11. So he has been now instructed to go past the safety car. So the safety car hopefully means that we will go back to green flag racing very, very soon indeed. Now is the instruction going to be given this time coming out of turn number 10 or might it be the lap later? I do think it might be another lap possibly behind the safety car you can see just how fantastic the conditions are here in Italy you can see the heat haze rising off the tarmac in what is a very pretty part of northern Italy and as the cars under safety car there goes Bobby Labonte off the lead lap is Bobby Labonte now here is the first car that is now a lap down so Alex Jompi is back on the lead lap following the free pass if we have another safety car period Bobby Labonte would get the free pass and that would get him back on the lead lap so safety car lights are still on so we've got one more lap behind the safety car here and we haven't quite had the action up at turn number 11 that i thought we might get turn number 11 is the area where they are under full acceleration before they rise up the crest and then have to dive their way on the brakes and there is poor old francesco sini who was hoping for a great thing it's a local team who are based not that far away from autodromo di franciacorta but sadly for him something has gone wrong with the number 12 car and after what was a poor weekend in Valencia where he finished 28th in the first race and 27th in the second race having for the first time ever got him through to Super Pole to then qualify 10th out of the 12 for Super Pole he was hoping for very very good things here there's been plenty of support for him here this weekend as the thousands of fans still continue to arrive at the circuit and even more are expected tomorrow safety car will be in at the end of this lap so it's just coming out of turn number four now up towards the new kink at turn number five on this 2.504 kilometer circuit here and this is the new section of the circuit you see the old section there where they would go through the chicane and the other side of the blue curbing so they've still got the layout so they can utilize either this faster layout or the slightly slower but longer layout this weekend it's been opted that we use this new layout and I think certainly that has been hugely well received by the drivers so safety car heading out of turn number eight with a couple of corners to go before we start to see them get themselves back into two by two order we are now on lap number 22 of the schedule 25 so the restart with three laps to go is going to be very interesting indeed and let's not forget again that the cars that on this restart lineup, second, fourth, sixth, eighth are all going to have to deal with the right hand corners and the outside line heading up to each one of those at turn number one, turn number two, and turn number three. So for Mark Goosens, for Fred Gabion, for the sixth place car, Anthony Kumpen, for the eighth place car, Thomas Ferrando, and up to tenth now, Martin Dubeck, they're all going to have to work terribly hard to try and cover off the cars that are going to be looking to try and squeeze their way through so neat two by two order door to door bumper to bumper is the instruction and then not to break from that formation until the green flag is waved was i think the information that was given to the drivers and they are now all ready for this restart you can see the slightly battered car at the tail end of the field which is the car that has now had two free passes the number 56 car racing chevrolet of alex jompi the italian driver He's back on the lead lap, but he's at the tail end of this train and hasn't really got a great deal more opportunity to try and gain places. So lap number 22 they are on at this stage. And we're about to go racing once more here in the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series. They turn their way out of turn number 12 up towards the start-finish line. The green flag will be waved very shortly. It looks as though there's a little bit of movement in the pack further down through the order. They get themselves back in there, the anticipation. And away we go. The green light comes on. It looks like it's a good restart from Mark Goosens this time again but he's got to cover off Loris Heisemans. Alan Day already starting to sprint away. Loris Heisemans has got the inside line with Mark Goosens. They go side by side round through turn one. There's contact between
between the pair of them. Goosens gets spun around. Loris Heisemans is involved. Everybody else having to break drivers right or drivers left. And that's the second time this season they've got together. Loris Heisemans is off in the gravel. Mark Goosens has been spun round. And that has really split the pack and will, without question, bring the safety car back out again. Loris Heisemans is involved. Alex Caffey, car number one, has managed to get itself involved. The number 47 car, Marconia Brew, has suffered further damage as well. So the safety car is back out on circuit and I did say the restarts were going to be interesting and that we've got three right hand bends and well Loris Heisemans was right there with Mark Goosens he got the better start he got himself alongside how much alongside is for the officials to sort out but as they turned into the corner there was contact between the pair of them and well Loris Heisemans suffered front end contact you can see Mark Goosens dragging the bumper of the number 91 car and well there is going to be a bit of sorting out I'm sure done post race as to exactly what happened there as things stand well it means that Alan Day still leads but now Gianmarco Urkeli is up into second position that uh, incident will be investigated after the race is the information that we are being given and we are now also going to be faced with for the first time this season a green white checkered which means that we won't finish under safety car we are now on lap, lap number 24 i think isn't it so it looks as though green white checkered if you're not familiar with it if you're just tuning in and aren't familiar with it it means that when we go green we will get one lap of racing before next time by they get the white flag which means that they will then get one further lap and then the third time by it will be the checkered flag so it's green then white for the last lap and then the checkered flag but that is up to race control to decide as to whether that is the course of action that we're going to take. So it really has been. You can see there, Loris Heisman's car still stranded in the gravel trap, as is the number 47 car of Marconi Abreu. You see, rather battered. There's not a great deal of bodywork on the front end of the number 47 car of Marconi Abreu. So for MRT, no Centini. They've got a bit of work to do to sort that out. Marconi Abreu will drive that very same car in the Elite 2 race later on today, whereas for Loris Heisman's car, it will be the Belgian driver Dietrich Siersens that will take over that car. And it depends on the conditions and the time to recover everybody. We've got two cars, so hopefully if we can get this sorted, we might be good for a green-white checkered because it would be an enormous shame to finish under safety car. The green-white checkered is available to us. Let's just hope that we've got sufficient time to get those cars dragged out of harm's way and then see as to whether Alan Day can hang on to it. So far, every restart, Alan Day has nailed the restarts and has instantly got back on it and has opened up an advantage, largely because I think he's just not having to worry about what's going on in his mirrors. Every time he's just got on with it and he's taken as wide a line into turn one as he really thinks that he can which means he's carried the momentum through turn number one as everybody else is worrying about who's around them and therefore they make themselves a little bit slower on the charge up to T1. So safety car heading out of turn number 10. You can see the orange car with its black flashes, Gianmarco Urkeli, is second at this stage. Uh, third is now going to be number 33, that's Luca Lasari, who's there in third place. You can see his light blue car in third place. Up to fourth has come Stenis Longin. Well, Stenis Longin, if he remains in fourth, is a consistent man this year because he finished fourth in both of the races at Valencia. But I think, yeah, there's been a bit of a shuffle there. I think the instruction has been given from race control for Stenis Longin to drop back and for the number three car, Fred Gabion to move up so they're reordering the field now and it's going to be Fred Gabion that moves himself up to second place with the reordering so who else is going to shuffle their way up I think that might be one of the major reshuffles and somebody else is just working their way up through the order that's Anthony Kumpen who is also working his way up through the order now the number nine car also having been instructed which is Gianmarco Urkeli that he needs to, to drop back into the right position which is going to be third possibly for him and who else might need to shuffle the order so there we go we've got the two breakdown units there on the exit of turn number two to sort out Loris Heisman's car and Marconi Bruce so they hopefully will be out of the way before too much longer and the order behind the safety car sees Alan Day lining up alongside the number three car of Fred Gabion the number nine car is third which is Gianmarco Urkeli fourth is going to be number 24 Anthony Kumpen now with the reordering of the field fifth is going to be the number 
33 car, which is Luca Lazar. And sixth, I think, is going to be now Toma Ferrando. Yes, it is. Yeah, there goes the playoff car of Toma Ferrando, the reigning Elite Two champion. So that incident for Loris Heismans and Mark Goosens has major, major, major implications for the championship. So if you recall, they both had pretty mixed weekends at Valencia for Mark Goosens. He finished second on the road in the first race, but was given a penalty which dropped him to eighth. And in the second race, he finished in 28th position. So it really was not a good weekend as far as he was concerned. And well, for Loris Heisemans, it was just an awful weekend. It was a weekend to forget. And well, he'll want to forget this race so far as well. 30th in the first race and only 24th in the second. And when you can only drop your worst round of the season, they are now going to be carrying not many points from some of these races and still with a long way to go in the championship with a further race this weekend two more to come at Brands Hatch and of course on the World Oval Challenge weekend at Tour before we then head to Hockenheim and Zolder both of those Hockenheim and Zolder double points so we're having a bit of reshuffling of the order looks as though Angelo Rigari, the number 27 car, is now up behind the number 29 car of Julian Schell. And showing that we are now on the final lap, according to what we're seeing on some of the information. You can see the cars moving out of harm's way, so we might, we might go green potentially at the end of this lap. So we're almost done. Looks as though everything is almost there. Uh, as for the car of Mark Goosens, well it is still circulating it's down in 20th position so it has latched itself onto the tail of the field so he is still able to continue but he's a long long way down through the order now is Mark Goosens fastest lap so far in this race is going the way of Alan Day with a 2 minute 12.922 that would put him on pole position for the second of the elite one races of the weekend and the second fastest lap is going the way of the car in 20th position i think is it no it's luca lasar i think who's who is going to be there so lucas lasar has posted a 1 minute 13.2 uh, but it's slightly slower 1 minute 13.2 than mark goosen so yeah it will be alan day and mark goosen's on the front row of the grid for tomorrow's race if of course things stay the way they are at this stage and for mark goosen's that it at least is some sort of consolation for what has been a poor weekend so far so that investigation will be carried out at the end of the race and any appropriate action that's deemed so by the officials will be taken third fastest lap in this race that will mean he'll line up third on the grid is going to be Luca Lassar and then Loris Heisemans, I think, has got the fourth fastest lap. So that looks as though the way they're going to line up and it does look as though we are not going to get a restart. We are not going to have the green-white checker, which is available to them, but it's clearly taken up just a bit too long to clear that instant. There's a lot of other support races here at Frangia Corta, and it looks as though we are going to finish under safety car, which means that they will cross the line in that order and the checkered flag will i think be shown this time through as they come over the start finish line we are indeed there you go there is the checkered flag being shown from the gantry which means that for the third race of the season the first race here this weekend in the nascar wheel and euro series elite one division it's going to go the way the win of alan day who claims another win not the way he'd want to win it he'd want to win it under full green he'd had the pace either way but he claims another win at Francia Corta. That means that he has now claimed some three wins at this circuit, has Alan Day. And if you add that to the wins he's already taken in Italy at the likes of uh, Maggione, at Adria, and here at Francia Corta, he has been the man to beat on Italian soil in the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series over the course of the last few seasons. Second in the race is number three, which is Fred Gabion who will be pleased with that second position. It'll be the first time that we have seen Fred on the podium so far this season. And third goes the way of car number nine, which is Gianmarco Urkeli for Racers Motorsport, the Ford Mustang. So it's a Chevrolet, a Toyota and a Ford inside the top three. And it's the 13th career, career win for Alan Day, which is the most amongst the active drivers in the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series. Fourth is car number 24, which is Anthony Kumpen for PK Car Sport. 
He needs another seven wins, does Alan Day, to catch the tally of Ander Villarino. That'll be something else which is firmly fixed in his uh, sights. Uh, fifth place is number 33, which is Luca Lassar with his Chevy. Sixth place is number 37, Tom Ferrando with the Ford Mustang. And seventh place is number 11, which is Dennis Longines' uh, Chevrolet. In eighth place, it's number seven, which is going to be the car of Martin Dubeck, the new team for this weekend, the Belgium Driver Club Academy. He is also the junior trophy winner, is Martin Dubeck, as he finishes there in eighth place. Ninth place is number 66, which is Christophe Bouchou. And tenth place is going to be car number 73, and that is Will Wilfried Busana, who is going to uh, t claim top honours in the Challenger Trophy. So congratulations to Wilfried. We'll see him out, albeit in Elite 2, driving a different car. But he's another driver that's doing both Elite 1 and Elite 2. 11th place is 41, which is Fabrizio Amata. In 12th place is number 29, Julian Schell. 13th goes the way of Angelo Rigari at the wheel of his Ford Mustang. Justin Kuntz in another Mustang, number 46, was there in 14th place. Head of 15th place, number 8, Dario Carzo, another Mustang. And it's another Mustang in 16th place as well. Uh, the mid-teens occupied by Ford Mustangs, number 78, Jerry DeVert. 17th place for 44, a Chevy for Mateus Haya. 18th place goes the way of Miguel Angel Dere Perez, who you can see down there towards the uh, your bottom left-hand corner of your screen. In 19th place is Alex Jompi. And 20th, the last car to finish on the lead lap is car number 91, which is Mark Goosens. Bobby Labonte will finish in 21st place, head of Alex Caffey who was three laps adrift and had a busy old race, didn't he? Who finished in 22nd. Loris Heisemann's 23rd, but not taking the flag. Neither did Marconi Abreu in 24th place. And retirements, unfortunately, for Francisco Sini, for Roman Inietta, for Mauro Trione, for Kenko Mura, and for Alex Graf, all of whom did not take the chequered flag. So Alan Day stretches the points leads on Fred Gabion and Anthony Kumpen. And he will be hugely pleased with that, uh, as will, I'm sure, Cal Racing, the Italian team on Italian soil, claim another win. But it's Alan Day, who seems to be the man to beat in Italy, who has claimed his third victory of the season. And, well, for the reigning champion, the 2017 champion in Elite One, Alan Day, he really has shown everybody what they need to do if they want to catch him, not just here at Francia Corta, but if they want to do anything about him all season. They have got their work cut out. So the order for the top 24 places, which is all of the finishers are there. And you can see that Alan Day is now in victory lane and he is going to be hugely, hugely delighted with that. An enormous crowd gathering around the car as well, ready to celebrate what for him is three wins out of three in 2018. The top three drivers heading to victory lane. So for Alan Day, for Fred Gabion, and for Gianmarco Urkeli. Gianmarco will be pleased with that. He had two solid top 10 finishes in Valencia, but couldn't quite get inside the top six. So he'll be as pleased as punch with that one. And as for Fred Gabion, well, he managed to finish on the podium. Gianmarco Urkeli is also, I think, going to claim his first Elite One podium as well. So it, it will be a big old smile on the Italian's face. The first Italian home as well on Italian soil. So that in itself is an achievement for him. So the drivers are there. They're just now about to get themselves out of their cars. And then we hopefully will be able to enjoy the celebrations down there in Victory Lane. And we hope that our roving camera that's down there as and when it gets itself into a position to pick up a signal again, we'll be able to hopefully grab a quick word with our race winner, Alan Day, who throughout the course of this season, I think we're going to see him in the commentary box joining us at one of the rounds later on in the 2018 season. And that car, the number 54 car, will be taken over by Ariana Casoli for the race later on of Elite 2. So Alan Day clambers on top of the Cal Racing Chevrolet, guitar in hand, on his violin in hand, is it? There we go. And he's busy playing his cardboard cutout violin here in Italy. A very likeable chap and a worthy champion last year is Alan Day. And, well, you wouldn't bet against him becoming a double champion in the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series. So he is as pleased as anything, receives the congratulation for Mariana Casoli and the Cal Racing team manager as there and the rest of the team, and rightly so, because he was quickest in free practice. He was quickest in qualifying. He went through to Super Bowl and was the quickest in Super Bowl. And, well, you can't argue about the pace that he brought through to the race, the first of the two Elite One races here in Francia Corta. So he is out of the car and... 
he, after he's had a, a quick chat to the team. Hopefully we can go and grab a, a very quick word with him and maybe with Fred Gabion and Gianmarco Urkeli as well. We've got plenty more racing action to come over the course of this weekend because, of course, we've got the Elite 2 race that will take place later on today and then of course we do it all again tomorrow with the elite two cars going out first onto the circuit and the second race of the day tomorrow will be for elite one if you want to make a note of the times where you can find us tomorrow then it's going to be uh, for tomorrow our first elite two races at 10:50 central european time that will be 4:50 in the morning eastern time in the u.s the elite one race tomorrow takes place at 2:20 central european time and at slightly more convenient 8:20 in the morning eastern time in the u.s but before all of that of course we've got more to come from let's hear from our race winner down in victory lane alan your first win here in italy on this weekend italian grand prix how do you feel after winning three races in the nesco new series 2018 ah it's a blast i had the best time driving behind a safety car best race of my life uh, no but seriously um, yeah we couldn't we didn't have too much uh, action in the race I managed to have a good race manage the, the pace having the pole position for tomorrow they are amazing they are amazing I can't say too much the car is amazing was I'm driving an airplane <laughs> what are you expecting tomorrow same as today I don't know who's our second and third, but uh, yeah, same as today, having a good start, running away, and having another win. All right, thank you very much, and congratulations. Congratulations to Alan Day. And don't forget, we've got more racing coming up later on this afternoon with the Elite 2 race that is scheduled to take place. If you're watching in Europe, it's 4.50 Central European time. The feed will start. And if you're watching over in the US, then hopefully you'll have had your breakfast by then and thinking about lunch. It's going to be 10.50 Eastern time in the US. Don't forget, you can keep following us because there's going to be more social content posted over the course of the next hour with reaction from the drivers and, of course, some of our class winners as well. In the meantime, though... Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you again later on this afternoon for the Elite 2 race at Francia Corta.